The calculator is a quick way to find where a system intersects, and we're going to look at that today. You could always check your solutions on your calculator as well. I have two lines here. My first line is going through at 3, and it has a slope of negative 5 thirds. So it's going down 5, right 3. My second is a line has a y-intercept at negative 3, and my slope on that one is going up 1, right 3. So you can see, once these are graphed, you can find that intersection, and that intersection is 3, negative 2. You could check your answer by plugging in 3, negative 2 into both equations. So is y is negative 2 equal to negative 5 thirds times 3 plus 3? And it is. And similarly, I could see if y, which is negative 2, is equal to 1 third times 3 minus 3. And you'll end up with negative 2 equals negative 2 on that one. So this point does work. On the next one, I have two lines, again, that I've graphed. My first one is here, has a y-intercept of 3, and my slope, if you look at it, it's going up 4, right 1, up 4, right 1. My second line has a y-intercept of negative 2, and my slope is going down 1, right 1, down 1, right 1. Where these two intersect is right here, and that point is negative 1, negative 1, that will be my solution. It's where they intersect. And you could check your answer again on your calculator. Let's maybe do it on this one. So is y, which is negative 1, equal to uh, 4 times negative 1 plus 3? So do I get negative 1 on this right side when I type that in? And I do. And then I can check it on the other one. The opposite of negative 1, so the opposite of negative 1 minus 2. And I get negative 1 on that. So negative 1 is equal to the right side, which was negative 1. So you can check these on your calculator if you'd like, which I would recommend. On example three, they graph both of those lines, and our intersection is four, negative three. It's where they cross. On number four, I now have a quadratic. It's opening up since A is one. You could make a table and graph this, or you could find the vertex by doing negative b over 2a, but I don't think we've talked about that yet. But you could make a table and graph that. We have an intersection here, and we have an intersection here. So this point is 0, negative 2, and I could plug that into both equations. So 0 squared minus 4 times 0, that's 0, minus 2. The right side is negative 2, and that's equal to y, and notice y was negative 2. I could plug it in the bottom. x, which is 0, minus 2 gives me negative 2. And that's negative 2 is equal to y, and remember y was negative 2. So it does work for both of my equations. The other solution is 5, 3. And you could plug that in here. 5 squared is 25 minus 4 times 5 be 20. So 25 minus 20 is 5 minus 2 is 3, which is equal to y, which is 3. And I could plug it into here. 5 minus 2 is 3, which is equal to y. y was 3. So both of these, you can check them, and they do work. On the next one, this was done, I think, on Desmos and they gave you the answer. So we have 5, 8 is one place where they intersect, and the other place is at negative 3, 0. On example 6, 
This line is just going to touch it at one spot. So it's tangent or it touches at 2, negative 6. So this one only has one solution. A linear quadratic system can have 0, 1, or two solutions. Let's go ahead and draw an example of each one of these. So I could have a quadratic and have a line going through it and it may cross it in two places. So this one would have two solutions. I could have a quadratic and a line that may come and just touch it at one spot. So this would have one solution. Or I might have a quadratic And maybe I have a line over here. And those never cross, so this has no solutions. Now we're going to use the graphing calculator to graph our system and see where they intersect. I'm going to have you Turn your calculator on and go to window. You want your x values going from negative 10 to 10 with a scale of 1 here. And we're going to have the y minimum going from negative 10 to 10 with a scale of 1. You can change these scales and we're going to do that on one example. But for now I want you just to look at this scale as we work this. That way we'll all have the same scale and sometimes people have these numbers backwards and then they get errors, but if we all start with the same window, hopefully we will be good on graphing these. If you don't have a graphing calculator, there is an app that you can get for your Chromebook. So you'll have to um, look and see in Schoology, I should have some directions on how to get that. Our first equation we're gonna graph once you have that window correct. And you could also, if you want to just put the window in quickly, you can go to zoom six and it will automatically put the window in there from negative 10 to 10 for X and Y with a scale of one. Go to Y equals and in Y one, we're gonna put our first graph. The X key is right next to the alpha key. so. Green on mine, it may be a different color on the Chromebook one. So we're going to type x squared, and you can either use the square key here, or this caret key will also give you the square. I think I'll just use the x squared there. If you use the caret, you may need to arrow out of your exponent if you're still up in the exponent. Then minus, and make sure you use the subtraction key. You don't want to use the negative key at the bottom because the negative key at the bottom will multiply it by a negative. So make sure you're using the subtraction key. 4x and then subtract 2. And our second one, so we'll arrow down, is x. And again, that's next to the alpha key. And then minus, we're subtracting. So make sure you use the subtraction sign, not the negative at the bottom. And then once we have those, we're going to go ahead and hit graph. And notice we get the picture here. I want to find where these intersect. So to do that, you're going to press second and then trace. And that gives you to the calculate above. And so we're going to calculate an intersection. So you can arrow down to number five 
or you can just press five on your calculator and it will get you there. And then there's a little blinking cursor here. It looks like they've called it a spider in these directions, but you wanna get it close to where they intersect. So maybe it's closer the other way. So it's close to that intersection. So first curve, I'm gonna hit enter. And then notice my calculator says second curve. So I'm gonna to have to hit enter again. And then it says guess. You wanna hit enter a third time, and then it will give you the intersection, which is zero, negative two, which is one that they gave you here. To find the other intersection, you're gonna go to second trace again, and we wanna pick intersect again. but I need to move my cursor over to the other intersection so it picks that one and not the first one. Okay, so get it as close as you can, and then you're gonna have to hit enter three times. It says first curve, then second curve, and then guess. And so my other intersection then is five, three, which they have listed there. So those directions are up at the top, so if you get stuck, you can go back to those directions. Let's go ahead and try two more examples. We're gonna go back to y equals, and I'm gonna hit clear on both of these. I'm gonna arrow down, hit clear. So those are no longer in there. We're on the same window that we were on the last one. I'm gonna type in x squared. The x is next to the alpha key and then squared minus 6x. Make sure you're using the subtraction key, not the negative at the bottom, plus five. That's our first equation. Our second equation, we don't have y by itself, so we're gonna need to get y by itself, so let's do that. I'm gonna add 2x to both sides, so y equals 2x plus five. Because I have y equals here, I need to get that by itself. So I'm going to type in 2x plus 5. I have both of my equations in. I'm going to go ahead and graph those. And so it looks like it's going to intersect up here. So if I want to make my graph go a little bit higher, I'm going to go to Window. And to make it go higher, higher would be a y value. So you can pick, and I'm gonna pick one that's not quite high enough. So maybe I pick 15. And I'm gonna graph it again. I'm close, but still not high enough. So let's go back and I'm gonna pick window. And instead of 15, maybe I'll make it 25 or 30. It's up to you. But you need to make sure it's in your window. So let's say that window works. Okay, I can see my intersection for both of those now. I'm gonna go to second trace and I want an intersection. So I'm gonna go down to intersection or just press five and it'll get you there. Looks like the blinker's pretty close to my first one. So I'm gonna hit enter three times. First curve, second curve, guess. My intersection is zero, five. And then my second intersection, I'm gonna to have to go pull a second, trace again, and go down to number five, which is intersection. And I'm gonna arrow way over there. And I'm gonna get it close, and it says first curve, enter, second curve, enter, guess, enter, make sure you put enter three times, and it says the word intersection. If you don't have intersection, you haven't got there yet. And so that intersection is 821. And you could check those points. You plug them in, plug 0, 5 in both equations, plug it in 821 into both equations, make sure each point works in both equations. Okay, let's try one more example. 
I need to put those in. This time I have a quadratic and a quadratic instead of uh, two lines, or a line and a quadratic. So I'm going to go to y equals. Let's clear those out. My first one is x squared plus 5x minus 7. My second one is 2x squared minus 2x plus 3. And again, make sure you're using the subtraction sign and not the negative at the bottom. Otherwise, it's multiplying it and it'll mess it completely up. Graphing this. Oh, I don't think we changed our graph back. It's on the same window it was. That's okay. And it has an intersection here, and then it separates, and it has another intersection up here. So what this graph looks like, I'm going to draw it exaggerated. I have a graph that looks something like this. And it's going to have an intersection here and here. But these are really close together on our graph, but they do separate. I have an intersection down here, and then it's going to come again together way up there. And we can't see where it is going to come together up there. The ones on the homework, quiz, and tests are obvious, and you don't have to make many, if any, changes in your window. But for this window, I'm going to need to move my Y max up to 50. And they do separate and come together again up here. So it looks something like this. These are probably, it probably doesn't dip down. That dip is somewhere over there. But they do separate. Let's go ahead. I'm going to find this first intersection. So second trace. And I want first curve, enter, second curve, enter, guess, hit enter again. So one spot they intersect is 2, 7. And then the other place that they intersect is way up here. I'm going to second trace and intersect. And let's move that cursor up closer up here. And I'm going to hit enter, enter, enter. And that intersection is 543. So my picture doesn't really look like theirs because that vertex is over here. But you get the idea that they do separate and come back together. And that will do it for the notes today.